Uh, right, guys, thank you for coming today for our screening of Batman uh, Killing Joke. The Killing Joke. Um, I'm here with Ian Hughes. He designed the range. That's really the main reason we're here today. The fantastic Joker range we've had on the rails outside. We've actually got two of the models in today who did the creative shoot. Let's all make them feel a little bit awkward by waving <laughs> them. A round of applause, actually. I thought they, they, they look fantastic. Um, so, Ian, just going to ask you a few questions today about the range yep. and let's start by asking you what was the inspiration of the range? Um, so we wanted to do a Joker range, but specifically Joker, not necessarily Batman. Um, we wanted to do something that's a little bit different to the general merch that's out there, so a little less on the smile, a little less on the kind of kookiness, um, a little less on the colour palette as well. It's like a usual kind of red, white and green, so we wanted to be a bit more kind of um, different and a bit more obscure with that. Um, so there's a few references to the Joker colour palettes of the 60s and 70s in there, which kind of fits the aesthetic of a range as well. So that's the main inspiration behind it, is that we wanted to do something uniquely Joker. And what was the sort of process of putting this deck together? How do you, how do you build a range like this? Um, a lot of research, um, a lot of reading comic books and watching films and kind of a little bit of Wikipedia as well. Um, and you just kind of try and have a bit of brand immersion. Surround yourself with everything Joker, find out what he's about, and then you piece it together from there. So the whole card element of a range, so the fact we've got um, eight garments, which represent like the ace, the king, the queen, the jack. We've also got the hearts, the spades, um, the clubs and the diamonds. So that all ties together in the range as well, and that's a very kind of important part of the Joker's character and a big important part of the origin story as well. Um, the reason we call it the heist collection um, is because the Joker is um, in, in Origins of the Red Hood, so it's a, um, comic book 168. Um, he goes to the Monarch Playing Card Company and tries to steal a million pounds. Um, Batman kind of tracks him down and Joker makes his escape and he falls into a vat of, vat of acid at the Ace Chemicals plant. Um, and that's how he becomes this kind of character that he is. So we wanted to put all that together within the aesthetic of a range and tie it together with, with the garments and just piece it together from there, really. Uh, I love the fact you admitted you looked on Wikipedia for research. Um, <laughs> yeah, who doesn't though, right? <laughs> uh, uh, takes me back to university days. That was yeah. very honest of you. So quite clearly you're a fan. Have you always been a fan of the Joker of this, of this range? Yeah, and I think... He doesn't get enough of the limelight. Um, it's he's usually, doing all right at the minute. He's doing I mean, all right at the moment, was, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. a long time coming, but he's such a strong, strong character in, in that kind of DC universe. Um, and it's nice to take him away from Batman and nice to not focus on that relationship of the kind of good and the bad. And it's what Joker is as a, as a person, really. There's so many different origin stories that I think trying to place one is really difficult so we've gone pretty much across the board with it and tried to take elements of of each of the each of the God, like 80 years since he's been around so um just trying to piece all that together really and create something that is for the fans um the fans of a joker rather than fans of dc and batman so on that have you got a particular favorite garment from the range um so my my favourite one, it's actually in the goodie bag, is the um, Queen's one. So it's the um, let's put a smile on your face uh, back print. Um, and that that's my favourite really because that just sums up the Joker for me. And spoiler alert, you're all going home with one of those tonight. <laughs> yeah. We didn't plan that at all, uh, <laughs> honestly. Uh, that was Wikipedia research, nothing yeah. else. Um, who's your favourite Joker? Oh. Having not seen... The latest. Um, so I think, I think Joaquin Phoenix is going to be my favourite, judging from what okay. I've seen. Um, Heath Ledger's really good, but um, who's someone mentioned uh, Mark Hamill before? Don't say Jared Leto. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say Jared Leto. Um, Did anyone think Jared Leto is the best Joker? Deadly Silence, brilliant. Is a trick question? <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, yeah. it is a trick question. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think Mark Hamill is kind of sums it up. He's got. He's got it down, hasn't he, really? 
Is there anything you would have liked to put on the range that perhaps you couldn't for any reason? Perhaps something we could see in a, a range that drops next year? Um, there's so many aspects to the Joker that I feel we could... There's enough there that we could do another Joker range if people would like to see another one at some point, maybe. Maybe focusing on something slightly different. Maybe bringing in some of his um, partners in crime into mm -hmm. it. So maybe like we could make Joker more of a like DC villains range or something like that in the future and kind of bring in these other characters. I think that'd be quite cool. Uh, I'm slightly biased, but because I'm, I'm your colleague, um, one of the things mm -hmm. I love about the Heist collection is that it, it looks like a fashion range. And when you're taking something that you love something that's got that kind of pop culture geeky element to it, how important do you think it is to actually put that into a slightly more premium world? Um, yeah, I think, I think it's really important because that type of product doesn't exist. I feel like um, if you, people are a lot more trendy and a lot more kind of savvy about things nowadays. And I think having that um, type of garment where you can go out and you can be kind of on a night out or, um, you know, nice dinner or something, and you're wearing this garment that's kind of more geeky, but it's a bit more understated and a bit more kind of fashion orientated. I think that's that's a good thing. No, oh, brilliant. Um, has anyone got any questions for Ian, either about the Joker in general? Because as you can tell, we've done a lot of Wikipedia research. Yeah, yeah. Um, if it's not on Wikipedia, I can't answer it. No. Um, or Ask Jeeves. That's the only two <laughs> formats. You, only two formats you work with. Has anyone got any questions about the range? Yeah, perhaps so we can put it together. Somewhere. Just you in the corner. So, it's, it's a difficult one really because you, you've got an idea in your mind when you start a range of what you want it to be and the more kind of involved you get with the comic books the more you kind of spot things that you maybe haven't spotted before because you're looking for those references to put in. So it's more about those kind of sound bites that are in the comic books especially. So it might be a panel, it might be um, a page, something like that, but you want to extract something from it because it means everything about the Joker to you. So, um, we try to put as much of that into the range as we can. Um, so, yeah, that, that's how it kind of builds. It builds through, you're very conscious of it, and it's what connects with you when you're doing your research. And you have a question in the corner? Yep. Yeah, just um, from a designer standpoint, obviously I've, I've worked with Star Guys and stuff, so how did, it, how did it sort of working with, did you have to work with DC for assets and stuff like that? How did that sort yeah. of work? Um, so it's, a, it's about a three month process. Um, it's quite arduous, there's a lot of back and forth. Um, DC have a fantastic bank of assets that they allow us to use. Um, it's, it's difficult because they want us to use them in a certain way. So I guess the reason why a lot of people don't put, put this type of, type of range together is because it's very, very difficult. So there's a lot of kind of, this is going to be the concept, this is what we want to achieve from it, and you've got a smooth talk them into into kind of see, seeing it on your on your page as well, so um, so yeah, it was difficult, but it was enjoyable as well. Yes. Uh, what was the most difficult thing to get past Warner's then that you managed to get on the shirt? Um, there is a garment with like a hand drawn crown on it, and that was the most difficult difficult piece. And the reason for that was because they don't necessarily allow you to do off off style guide stuff, as as you might know. Um, so they wanted me to use this terrible crown that kind of looked like it was off, um, off a Katie Price kind of range or something like that. <laughs> and um, it, it, right up until like the deadline for it, that was what was on the garments. And I had this moment where I just said to um, like the license manager, I called Chris, I said, we need to change this. I can't sleep at night. I was literally having sleepless nights about this crown. So we managed to trawl through the asset bank, find something similar, mock it up, send it over, and that was a, f a few days before we started kind of putting it into production. So um, that was the most difficult bit for sure. Um, I, for one, did not expect Casey Price to get mentioned <laughs> in a in a Q and A about the Joker range. Anyone else got any questions at all? <laughs> We've got yes? one in the middle. Yeah. Is that a Katie Price theme question? <laughs> 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 it's actually a double barrel one. So obviously we've got the pieces that we have from the line. Um, is there any pieces that you made that didn't actually make the cut or you couldn't use them for one or another? So 
if you could just design anything without DC holding your Okay. What would, what would you do? Um, so I've, we've, we've come pretty close actually to the original vision. Um, through all the hard work of putting it together, um, I think that there was a few designs that didn't make for cut, but that's more down to me rather than um, Warner. So I'll, I'll tend to do a bit of design work at the start just to get kind of in the mood for it, get kind of in the, in the moment with it, and then I'll sack a lot of that off. Um, just because when you put in a range together, it's more than one piece. If you, if you do one piece, you can focus on that and put all your energy into it. When it's a range, you'll see like it balances, it's got um, a couple of front prints, back prints, and it kind of sits well together. So a, a lot has been taken out of a range that was initially in there. Um, yeah. Any other questions at all? Yes? Yeah, I know you mentioned that you talk everyone's from like the 60s and 70s jokers. Was there one specific joker that you kind of used the most from, or was it just kind of really a good mix of both? Yeah, so um, we didn't want to focus too heavily on one. Um, so it's more of an amalgamation of lots of different jokers. We didn't want to tell one particular story or focus on one particular incarnation of a joker. It's more, it's all comic book related, so it's all jokers from the comic books, but there's colours from one, um, graphic styles from another, quotes from another. So we've put all that together really to create one piece. Um, it's a question for me, you, really, you, you just spoke about colours. How important is a colour palette when you're designing the range like this? It must be quite, quite easy just to, to go a bit crazy almost. Yeah, I, I like to restrict the colours we work with because it's, um, it helps everything tie in. And when we talk about colours, it's the first thing I did is the colour palette. How did you decide on those colours? Um, what I liked, okay, <laughs> mainly. Very honest. Um, what I thought would sit well together, because there's obviously an element of that, but we did want to be true and kind of take some colours from different jokers as well. Okay. Any other questions at all? Yeah, you're in the back again. Um, so there are a lot of versions of like televised jokers, but why did you pair the fashion watch with the killing joke in particular? So the, ki the killing joke, um, the comic book, mm. um, I'm a big fan of the Joker comic books. Um, that's the first time I came across the Joker or the rest of it. So we wanted to pair it with the more comic orientated elements rather than a film and TV. Um, because I guess film and TV is more mainstream in a way. And um, the comic books, unless you're you know, like a bit of a nerd, you may, maybe not have read them. Um, so we wanted to have that layer underneath. Uh, any other questions at all? Yes, you're in the middle. Uh, obviously, with the, uh, the Joker being topical at the moment, it's a, a good time to, to see this range. Do you, do you see yourself um, doing a range for other topical DC properties, like Watchmen's coming out soon? You're obviously the Joker met in recent history. Do you see yourself looking at other DC properties and doing something similar? To that? Um, I think it's got to be right for a start. So, um, Joke is very topical, but we've purposefully not gone with the, the maybe the topics that this new Joker film kind of encapsulates. It's more about um, kind of hitting that zeitgeist a little bit and making sure that. Whereas this film's very much kind of, it's almost off comic book. We want to make sure that there's something related to a Joker that people who maybe don't get the film will like through the range. Yeah, any other questions? Yes, you go. Kind of sound like your question, but like any DC property, would there be another one that you would like to tackle for a clothing range? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so many. Like, there's, there's so much in DC. Um, we've previous done, previously done a Batman one, which was Batman 80th. I don't know if any of you guys saw it, but um, it was a garment for every decade, um, which I thought was really cool. Um, in terms of in terms of DC, there's sounds like a stay tuned to me. And it does yeah, sound like, does a, sound stay a, bit like a stay tuned. Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. maybe, um, maybe stay tuned Marvel. to that. Uh, let's focus on DC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let's, let's not go there. Uh, have you got a question, Tom? Uh, it basically. Right. Okay, yeah. Anyone else got a question okay. at all? Anyone? Yeah. Are we done? Um, right, I just want to give a round of applause to Ian because without him we wouldn't have the brain. Yeah. And uh, 
thank you all for coming. Um, we're going to be doing more of these screenings. Stay tuned, along with other DC properties. No Marvel, maybe some Marvel. And uh, eat the rest of your popcorn and have a good night.